Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Tonight we have uh, an update, of course, our global intel update with Larry. There's a lot going on, and we have a special guest, Larry's wife and uh, Darnett. And uh, how are you doing, Darnett? I'm I'm doing good, Stuart. I'm hanging in (laughs) like everybody else. (laughs) I think that's what we're all doing. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, Stuart. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, Well, I think maybe let's start with the paranormal, because there's a lot of paranormal activity, I notice, on the coast zone there. I think they had something about Wolfman or something that's similar to a Wolfman. Uh, Did you read that, Larry, at all? I haven't had a chance to look at it. I was just told about it. I saw some of that. I've got an echo, too. I, I don't know if you hear it or not. Yeah, I can Feedback. hear it, but it's still pretty good. Okay. Um, I saw that, and then, of course, Augusto Perez has got, uh, you know, he was given information about uh, the wolf, you know, entities. And then at <laughs> the same time, uh, there's a lot of reports around Tallahassee, Oklahoma, of uh, upright wolf. Wow. And they are vicious and attacking people, I understand, from from what I've heard. Yeah, that's what's interesting. They are doing some attacks, and all at the same time, um, there appears to be in Canada, they've got something they're calling a wolf, upright wolf there that are, are causing a stir. So it's not just uh, local, it's, it's spread out. Uh, but this goes along with what Augusto Perez, a vision he had about some type of wolf entity that seems to appear during the end times and and torments people and threatens people. And he says it'll even even do worse later. Wow. Just what we need. You know, (laughs) a little paranormal (laughs) stuff thrown in there on top of war and famine. and uh, Garnett, you've done some talking to an individual that has had some yeah. very unusual experiences with, uh, like, what could, what would you call them, shadow people? The last one, maybe? It could very well be, uh, Stuart. Uh, from what she told me, uh, this entity uh, came through her door, and she said that it shocked her that it could just walk in. Uh, it was like a square thing, and then it took the form of something, like a person semi like a person with a hat and a scarf, you know. And Mm -hmm. uh, she said that it really caught her attention. She she rebuked it in Jesus' name, didn't rebuke. Uh, She said it finally just kept on uh, coming towards her, and she finally rebuked it again. She rebuked it again. (laughs) She said this thing wasn't going anywhere. And she said then finally it, just she started towards towards it because she got real angry. She was real angry uh, because mm-hmm. it had had come into her home. And when she started towards it, said it just kind of smiled at her and turned and left out the door. And she said, "There she was standing in the middle of her room." So she goes and gets a bottle of oil and anoints her house. And she and I talked about it. We thought that it was some kind of a doorway that had been opened, you know, by something, uh, some mm-hmm. reason there in her home and uh, she's had several instances there at that house she said that she also had another instance of some things on top of her roof like demons and she oh, really? Just really uh really had some really things and she calls me you know and we talk when these things happen and she kind of explains them to me and she said you know, it just makes the hair stand up on the back of your head. So, <laughs> and I know what she means. Um, yes, yes. I think we're getting into a time where we see this paranormal stuff going on a lot more than what we ever thought. And after this thing with the wolf man standing up on its hind legs, 
I'll be honest with you, when I hear the wolves and the coyotes howling and running, sometimes it gives me cold chills. I mean, you know, I'll be by myself and I'll be thinking, whoa. (laughs) And I'm not afraid. I mean, I'm not a scary person. I'm the kind of person that will pick up a weapon and go outside and check outside the house, you know, especially. And uh, I don't get scared easy. But those things anymore, after hearing those stories, it just, it, it makes you think, you know, because what do you do if it doesn't rebuke? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's something that uh, the Christian world's going to have to think about because, you know, if the hand of the Lord is not protecting you, you can be in a lot of trouble with these entities. But, yeah, that's true. And, and you know, I've noticed lately when I, I work in some different people's homes and sometimes mm-hmm. he'll have me. He'll tell me, he'll say, you know, don't go that way. Don't don't leave it alone. Don't mess with it. You know, in other words, I've been real sick this last few months. And I'm a lot mm-hmm. weaker than what I have normally been. And I'm not as attentive as I should be. I mean, everything has hit me pretty hard. And <laughs> I get pretty weak pretty quick. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so uh, I was in this home uh, about last week. And I started down a hallway and had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. There's no lights on in that house. But there's a room there that has stuff in it. And uh, it also has I has my stuff in it, but I sleep in another room. And so I started to the bathroom, which is right next door to it. And he made me go another way. He says, you're not to go that way. And so the best thing I can tell people the Lord will tell you what you can and cannot do if you're obedient and listening. And you need to heed the warning because you don't know what's going to happen if you don't. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. you know, at, at my situation right now, how weak I am, I don't need to be getting into a battle that I can't handle. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you had uh, a, a, an interesting, uh, I don't know whether you'd call it wood, would would you classify the encounter with that flying entity a a mothman or was it different than a mothman? I'll be honest you with were... you, it reminded me of the old Aztec god of the oh. co- what do you, what do you how do you say Quetzalcoatl or whatever that yeah, is? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. He had he had the form of a man, uh, muscle like a man. He had wings like a bat kind of like a bat person, but on his head mm-hmm. had a had a head of a bird, like a, a beak, uh, like a bird man. And that was mm-hmm. really weird. And I caught it as it as the door slammed too. I was lucky I had my legs inside the door because it rocked the car with the wings. And uh, I wasn't afraid then I was more healthy, in, and I guess in the spirit realm I was more alert because of, uh, you know, being more healthy, I guess. And uh-huh. uh, so this thing, I felt the wind coming as I started to get in the car door. Uh, started open, I opened the car door and sat down in the car. I was looking for something because I was getting ready to leave my mother, so I spent the night with her. And it was early in the morning, probably about 6. And uh, I sat down in the car and started looking around in the car for things. And uh, as I started to look, uh, open the door, and I had it just kind of cracked open, and I just pulled my leg in when all of a sudden this wind hit me. And and it rocked that car door and slammed that door. And uh, I looked out the windshield, and there it was, standing in front of me. And uh, I got the word watchers. As as it did that, and I saw the form, and then it cloaked itself, and it was very interesting. I I really wondered what was going on. I said, "Lord, you know, watchers," <laughs> and I felt like it was just watching to see what kind of what I was doing, you know, uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. and uh, watching my mother's house, which was very interesting because. My mother had went back in the house. My brother and his wife at that time were upstairs, 
and Mama told them, and because my mother's Native American, and you got to understand, she's <laughs> going to tell everybody uh-huh. everything. <laughs> and so anyway, she told them, well, my brother's wife got up and started crying. She's ready to go home. <laughs> we got to uh-huh. get out of here. This is bad, you know, and he kind of, he, he felt bad too. But um, I've noticed a lot of times um, when you hear the owls hoot and stuff like that, it, it comes to my attention a lot quicker than it used to. Used to, I'd brush it off, but now I expect anything because I know that we're walking in an area right now that there's a lot of entities coming and going. And uh, mm-hmm. people need to be aware of what their situation is and where they're at. And if they're sick like me, you don't need to jump into a fray unless you know the Lord's there for you. Because yes. you can get whipped pretty quick. <laughs> well, it sounds like with these uh, wolf attacks or, you know, standing up on their hind legs, I guess. What you, I don't yeah, know whether you call, you I know. Understand. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like a wolf man, as I mm-hmm. understand it, but they're upright. Yeah, yeah. that's what I understood. Uh, and so, she said they had glowing eyes. The lady that described it said it had glowing eyes. And then uh, also had another report up on the Oregon coast. A lady was out walking her dog, and she found a footprint. It was the size of her footprint, but it had the toes of, like, the foot of the Bigfoot. And oh. she said, she said, I think this is a small one. And uh, everybody was joking her because she posted it on Facebook. And I couldn't pull it off. I wanted to pull it off, and I couldn't get, <laughs> I couldn't get the photograph. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was very interesting because it looked fresh from what I could see there. I look at animal prints a lot when I'm out walking mm-hmm. if I get a chance to walk. And those things are definitely uh, apparently moving and uh, pretty pretty agile from what, what you could see, you know, the – print and stuff, and Mm -hmm. uh, she was Mm -hmm. measuring it up beside hers, and she said it has to be a small one, so. Yeah, it's probably a baby. Anyway, yeah, that's what she said, (laughs) and she said, I'm glad I did get there any sooner. (laughs) You know, we did, uh, you and I did a discussion on blood work, if you recall, Uh on on how the government was interested in Native American blood and blood types. Is that yeah. still ongoing, do you know? If it is, it's very hidden. Uh, I have been unable to find anything out about it. I can't get anyone to talk about it, and uh, they won't even mention it. <laughs> and the Native Americans sure won't mention it. You know, they don't want to mm. be, you know, they don't dig too much. They they give in to the authority. But, well, you uh, know, from, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was I thinking like... that I was just thinking that perhaps why they're so interested in it is the spiritual nature of the of the Native American. They seem more in tune to that aspect of uh, the world, the spirit aspect of it. Uh, yeah, I think so, and maybe the bloodline of uh, some of the past ancestors. You know, uh, Uh the healing property. They said that this was a healing property in this blood. And, uh, you know, uh, had had properties that they could use, in other words. And I'm sure there's Uh some older older people that are millionaires that probably won't live forever, you know. So Uh they're probably trying to generate those things into... Maybe uh, an army or something like that. You know, um, they would be they would be uh, they would be good properties for anything that would heal a person or take care of a person. You know, like the in warfare or yes. whatever. And and no telling where else you know they would use it. Uh, you know, there's probably all kinds of sites things that they would go with with the blood. But there's also the thing that the enemy always goes at you with the blood. <laughs> well, I think maybe it. also they're probably looking at uh, the DNA and uh, trying to ascertain who the 12 tribes of Israel are and the 10 lost tribes. 
yeah, so to speak. Yeah, that's probably part of it. Well, yeah, there is history of that with the Jewish people. I know a friend of mine, he, he once told me, he said, Darnett, you and I are probably, your, our ancestors are the same. He said, I came out of Russia, he said, but I'm a Russian Jew. And he said, there is a history of Native Americans being uh, Jewish, one of the lost tribes. Yep. And he said the the priests were always named uh, either Levi, Levi, Lewis. Their name started with an L. And see, my family's name is uh, Lewis, uh, my mother's side. And so mm-hmm. and that would go all the way back, you know, of course. But, um, of course, they were adopted. You know, they took different names when they were came out of the tribe and I've never found my grandfather's original Indian name. But okay. uh they they took names <laughs> and it, it's kinda of strange. <laughs> I was gonna mention, Stuart, I was gonna mention here, you know, she said her family name was Lewis, the Choctaw Indians, and guess what? When I began to research my my ancestors, uh we actually found out their name is Lewis, L E W I S. Wow. Um you know, it's a small sure. world. Even in even, even in Native American territory, so, except my side is Cherokee. And uh, you remember, you know, I had my DNA checked and it came back from the Mediterranean, uh, Cherokee, and then to the Mediterranean was the direction it traveled. And I was going to mention too, and Darnett might say something on this, but uh, there's a big push on in the Native American hospitals and such. They're drawing blood on everybody, and they're using the reason for it. They say they're checking for hepatitis C in all the people. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe they might be checking something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they they definitely, the enemy wants to know who the uh, ten tribes are. And I've always felt that uh, what we're watching here is going to be a big surprise <laughs> to a lot of people when it really comes right down to it as to who some of these uh, lost tribes are. Well, actually, Stuart, they did uh, draw blood on me for the same thing because I was sick. And uh, right after that, I got real weak. And, and I, you can ask Larry, I've been barely making it, coming and going. <laughs> uh-huh. it's, uh, they drew the blood, and what was funny, they said they lost the test. And then they drew it again for the same test. And I uh-huh. asked the doctor, I said, I said, I asked the doctor, I said, uh, are they that incompetent? And she says, I'm beginning to think so. But I'm beginning to wonder uh, <laughs> who got the Yeah, test. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, because they took out four vials out. <laughs> and it was oh. only for the, for the hepatitis C, supposedly, but... Unfortunately, they got my blood, and, you know, you you go in and you get examined. And, and I told them, I said, am I your guinea pig? <laughs> you might as well mm-hmm. talk about it because you don't have health care if you don't. <laughs> well, but, it just uh, seems, to, they, yeah, it just seems to me that uh, when you really analyze what they're doing and trying to develop these super soldiers, you know, and they're, trying to get them to have the the hearing of a dog and the vision of a cat or an eagle or something like that, and they they keep enhancing it. And uh, we know that they exist. James Caspel uh, over there in England, before he died, published that work on what they were doing, and, and the super soldiers actually do exist. So who knows what they're really doing in these deep underground bases where they work. That's true. You know, they do a lot of research, and a, a lot of it is these big companies. Uh, they don't they don't tell you a lot of that, but they're doing a lot of technology now. And uh, it's just really, uh, I imagine we would be shocked if we really saw what was really going on uh, with our blood and our samples of whatever they get from us, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. I know after that one test, I, it got knocked me down. <laughs> wow! And I've been I've been running to the doctor ever since. <laughs> well, that's so. Uh, 
who knows what they were up to. That's that's one of the problems yeah. we face when you go into the hospitals these days. You don't really know what they're yeah. up to. Well, you don't, even though the doctor orders one thing uh, and then your blood disappears. Now, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you know, it could be incompetent or it could be something else. And we've heard yes. a lot of stories about underground labs and stuff like that. So who knows, really, you know, unless you come face-to-face with it, there's no way you're going to know unless the Lord yeah. tells you. And, well, uh, I was just curious on the, on the Native American side of things because of spirituality connection, but also uh-huh. the uh, Ten Tribes connection, the Lost Tribes. Yeah. And they may be trying to identify exactly who's who. Yeah. Well, I have Native American on both sides. Uh, On my mother's side, we're Cherokee. On my father's Mm -hmm. side, uh, well, my father's side, let's see, my mother's side, we're Cherokee and Choctaw. Then my father's side was Cherokee, too. Uh, they Mm -hmm. They were called Black Dutch. So, you know, really, I'm a little more than what, you know, would be, uh, say, characterized on my card. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I am a card-carrying Indian, I mean, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, I guess that's, they probably are checking some of the things in the blood. And how, how are you going to figure out what they're checking, you know? Yeah, uh, you can. I've, no, I've, I've been in dentist offices and stuff like that and heard of mention stuff that, uh, probably uh, they would n- not normally say, and uh, it, it kind of makes me want to ask questions, but you don't question too much because the doctors won't tell you anything, even if they know they're not going to tell you. Because yeah. he was looking in my mouth one time, and uh, this woman that was there that was working with him, the tech, she says, look at her uh, upper, and I don't have a double row of teeth or anything like that, but I'm, he, but she mentioned something in the upper part of my mouth, and he said, shh, 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 like that, and got her quiet, and he just said, uh-huh, and went on, but every time I go in there, he's the one who works on me. Now, isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. It is. And uh, it's... Uh, so I'm the older I get, the more I know this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's but, uh, Yeah, we're all kind of running down. The batteries are not recharging yeah. like they used to. <laughs> no. We need to get another plug-in for the wall, I think. <laughs> or we need to get the supercharger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Any more uh, paranormal stuff uh, that you've had lately at all? Uh. Like sometimes you'll see things fly across the road, you know, like spiritual things. It's in the spiritual realm. It's not in the physical, but it manifests in the physical. And you'll see right. something dash across in front of you or see something out of the corner of your eye or see something movement, you know, or something like that. And You uh, had that owl. Remember that owl? That oh, yes. Yes, I did have something. I forgot about that. I was on the way to uh, somewhere, and I started up um, to this house. I was on my way to work, actually. And as I got closer, I saw something on the post. And I, as I pulled up beside of it, it was a hoot owl in the daytime. And it was sitting there, and Stuart, it looked me right in the face. It just looked me right in the face. It did not fly. It just sat there. And I stopped and looked at it, and then it finally, after a few minutes, it flew off. But that was the weirdest thing in the very daytime. I've never seen an owl, and it was a big one, and it was one of those horned owls. And uh, it just sat there and stared at me. Yeah. And lately it's just been really weird. And in this one house that I'm staying at, um, there's a dead tree there, and I've taken pictures of birds. Uh, the birds are sitting up there. They're vultures, and they just stay there, and there's nothing dead. You never smell anything. You never see anything. They just sit in that tree, 
And then on the Highline wires, there's uh, all kinds of birds. You know how in wintertime the birds will get on the Highline wires and just hang, mm. you know, like when for a storm or something, like a cold front's moving in, the birds will just sit there. Well, yep. now I've noticed up here uh, the birds just sitting there. I mean, they're just sitting on the highline. And I'm talking probably 50, 60 birds sitting on that highline wire and just double rows of them. It is so strange. It's almost like they're getting ready for uh, fall and leaving. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. That's it. And it's very strange. And I'm seeing the geese from Canada, the the goose, the geese that Mm -hmm. come down from Canada. I see them flying in and landing on the pools and just stopping, you know. It's very, very strange. And some of the animals that come up, they just make themselves at home. It's like they don't pay any attention to you anymore, even the wild ones. It's like they've accepted every everybody. I mean, they're not afraid. They're not scared of you uh, when you mm-hmm. walk out to them. Uh, it's like they know you in the spirit that you're not going to harm them. It's like they read you, you know, if you read somebody. And, uh, wow. So, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the bear hadn't ate me yet. <laughs> <laughs> you better not hope yet. he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come home well, and find a here. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Because I think uh, I think you're you know we're, we are dealing in the paranormal so much more now, and yeah. um, I think people are going to see more and more and more of this stuff. Yeah. And, they're, and it's going to shake a lot of people up because they never believed any of it. They just think this is oh that's fascinating, but they don't believe you. <laughs> you know. I think when you live around the paranormal so much. Uh, and and like all of us, we've seen things and we, we you know, we notice things. But sometimes mm-hmm. it becomes a full part of your life. You don't pay as much attention to it. I know that there, for a while, I was staying in Dallas and I would see things going on. And very strange things. And, um, it, and it, you know, it shouldn't have been happening. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Mm -hmm. I've noticed a lot of these elderly people, when they're in their homes, there's a lot of spirits moving. And believe me, it's not fun. (laughs) Yeah, I suppose. And, of course, you're dealing with kind of spirits maybe you'd rather not be dealing with in a lot of these cases. Well, yeah, because some of them are getting ready to depart this earth, and uh, that's what really brings out the bad. You know, the bad comes. And especially mm-hmm. if they're not saved. And the only thing I can tell anybody that uh, elderly, their elderly family, um, just going to church is not going to get you there. They've got to have yes. a relationship with the Lord. And if they don't have a yep. relationship with the Lord, then they're the ones that are going to be suffering. Um, and this life's too hard to go on to another life and it's suffer worse. there. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. uh, I had a dream, oh, it's been a few uh, months back, and the Lord took me to, to the, because I was thinking about, you know, passing on stuff, and uh, mm-hmm. it's just normal for me. And I was I was telling the Lord in the dream, I said, Lord, you know, I said, I don't mind dying. I said, I don't mind going on. I said, but, I said, what bothers me is I can't see all of your creations, all the universes and all the things in them that you've created. I can't see all that. And he took me to the edge of the universe, uh, of the universe here, and he told me, he, we were standing there, and he says, look out there, and I could see all the other universes. And he said, they're in, infinite. And he said, in another life, you will see this. <laughs> Well, so, it does say it, no human heart or eye can can even begin to fathom what awaits those who love the Lord. Yeah, so, and really, you know, like, it was so beautiful. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks so Enjoy. much for your for the information. Uh well, you're welcome. folks, you gotta get ready for this kind of stuff, like Darnett's trying to tell you. It's gonna become normal. Much more normal. So you gotta you gotta think about what happens if a gray, for example, shows up at your front door. What happens if you're walking by yourself and a a wolf man appears? Uh, these kind of things people are going to have to start talking about and not just what the news is for the day. And we do have a lot of news, don't we, Larry? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, lots of news. Where do you want to start on the news? Oh, my. Anywhere you want to. Uh well, why don't we start with North Korea? That seems to be uh, mounting up uh, more and more serious all the time. Uh, I got an article here that says North Korea threatens nuclear sword of justice in a destructive war against Donald Trump. North Korea has chillingly threatened to attack the United States with a nuclear sword, hinting a destructive war between the, new, uh, the two nations is now looming. Uh, what do you make of this sort of thing? Well, it's very interesting. Uh, it seems to be ramping up between North Korea and the U.S. Uh, Trump has came out now and said that China failed to draw back uh, North Korea. And so mm -hmm. what's interesting, a lot of threats are coming out. I watched an expert today talking and uh he was on Fox, of course, and he said that uh, he was more concerned about a EMP attack by North Korea than he was really one of the North Korean nukes hitting us anywhere. He said the damage would be much more devastating, and they were very concerned about that. And also, uh, there appears to be this situation with the Fitzgerald, uh, you know, the ship that uh, apparently now they found had something like an EMP he did and knocked it out. Uh, they didn't have radar. Everything was down. All their comms were down. And then that other ship hit them. And uh, they they seem to be tying possibly China or North Korea into that incident. And uh, also there's reports that the U.S. Navy is scrambling all over the world right now for some reason. Uh, nobody knows what the purpose is, but it seems uh, carriers are beginning to go everywhere, and they're actually sending a carrier group. Uh, in off of uh, Israel, so there's something afoot. Wow. So, if if this was an attack, either by China or North Korea, I've read EMP, I've read they hacked the uh, autopilot on the ship and they couldn't disengage it, and there's no question this was a deliberate and willful attack. They have traced the actual uh, pathway of that crystal cargo ship and it made a u-turn and rammed deliberately our naval vessel so that would be an act of war and i understood too that there are a couple there is at least one if not two carrier groups that were going elsewhere are now turning around and heading at high speed off the coast there of korea have you heard any more about that? That would be an indication of war. There's a, in the background, uh, the last day or two, there's been a lot of chatter about uh, a, an imminent war uh, between uh, North Korea. And, and what's interesting, Stuart, and I like your opinion on this, I, I called your attention earlier today a uh, post by allnewspipeline.com and also Steve Quill, Q Alerts, uh, talking about a White House statement that's not in the news out there that's warning of unusual and extraordinary threat and Trump indicating time is short. Now, I sent you, a, I had that on the blog today. What do you think uh, about that report? Yeah, this, is, this here's a direct copy from uh, the uh, executive orders. It's continuation of the national emergency with respect to North Korea. It's interesting, a continuation. So even under the Obama administration, uh, they were ready because I evidently don't know what Kim's going to do. But this is what it says on June 26, 
2008, by Executive Order 13466, President declared a national emergency with respect to North Korea pursuant to the International Emergency Economic Powers Act to deal with the unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. So then it goes into how he has amended it, and uh, he just reamended it. So there's got to be a reason why they would uh, do this. Uh, <laughs> I think this is where we're at. And, and the, it says the existence and risk of proliferation of weapons, usable fissile material on the Korean Peninsula, and the actions and policies of the government of North Korea continue to pose an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security. You suppose they've already drafted up what they're going to do? Well, it's very possible. You remember when, actually, when uh, Donald Trump came into office, you remember uh, a little after his inauguration, he was talking about, he mentioned North Korea and Iran, and he told everybody, he said, we're going to handle it, and I'm not going to tell you what we're going to do. Remember that? Yes. But he's obviously up to something. Uh, I don't know if he would call out his uh, TR-3B fleet and uh, use very advanced weaponry. I don't know how they can take Kim out without a huge loss of life in South Korea. And then who knows what China would do, or Russia, for that matter. We're already getting uh, some kind of stiff upper lip rebukes from Putin. Yeah, and I don't so. know if you've got a chance to watch the, the latest uh, Showtime expose on, uh, it's called the Putin Interviews. Very, very interesting, very interesting inter interviews with Putin by Oliver Stone, and uh, really revealing uh you know, Putin not only has the, uh, the uh, you know, I guess reputation as an incredible chess player, but he's, he, is, he exemplifies that in his interviews, uh, very intelligent, very, uh, he, 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 his moves are very calculated. Yeah. Well, we've known, I think, for some time that when you're dealing with Putin, you never want to un underestimate who you're dealing with. But I, I still think maybe this is a trap for the United States, because once we get into a conflict with North Korea, uh, all bets are off. Wars usually have a way of expanding, and I did notice even another article concerning India and Pakistan but there's a possibility of a nuclear conflict between those two. So I guess we could say that the alert level is up a little bit here with this uh, rhetoric from, from Trump that, uh, well, China tried, but they couldn't do it, so we'll have to handle it. Uh, that's kind of an interesting wordage coming from a president. And to put it out publicly, is this a warning to the American people? Get ready, because this is coming. I would not be surprised. I think that, uh, you know, you asked earlier about the plans. I think those plans are already in place. Uh, it's just a go signal, probably. And, and you know, it'll, if Trump reacts to North Korea like he did Syria, we won't even know about it until uh, after the attack. Yes. Hmm. Uh, what's going on in the Middle East with Kushner and Abbas and Netanyahu? Speaking about, uh, how do we say, tensions <laughs> rising and temperatures rising. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, of course, what's also interesting in this mix is that uh, it appears that the new uh, France, in Saudi Arabia, Salman, bin Salman, uh, has been appointed heir uh, by the king. And apparently that's boding good news 
for Israel is, uh, you know, of course, that's one part of it. But then on the other hand, uh, Jared Kushner, who was sent suddenly to the Middle East ahead of time, uh, has met with Netanyahu and uh, some of his people and then met with the boss. And the reports coming out of Koenig International News today, here's the two headlines. Uh, number one says Abbas said enraged by the Jared Kushner meeting, and uh, so that that shows problems developing. And then uh, the Israeli Defense Minister Lieberman announced today that Abbas is dragging Israel into war with Hamas. And at the same time, you've got the generals in Israel also indicating that uh, it's a very big possibility that they're about to go to full war against Hamas and Hezbollah. So that, that'd be a two-sided war. And, of course, we know that, uh, you know, Hamas and Hezbollah are really just, they're being directed by Iran, who is also right. moving more forces, more forces over and over and over into Syria and building in that area. So, uh, you know, Daniel 8 may be approaching. Well, I, you know, when you go into the star sign, that we've talked about on 923. Uh, there's been a lot of the gainsayers out there, and they're coming up with all kinds of reasons why this is all fake. It's a hoax, and it doesn't exist. And it's been there many times before, blah, 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 blah. So I decided to go in. It's part of my prophetic insight that's coming out soon. Uh, to investigate uh, whether these gainsayers, I call them, uh, are true, are, are right. And every one of their arguments you can destroy almost immediately, which makes me wonder if some of these people aren't trolls. Yeah. Because if the, if the people of the world began to figure out that this 9-11 or 923 star sign could be the very end of humanity uh, humanity's control on Earth because... We'd be moving into Daniel's 70th week, and we'd be uh, dealing almost directly with the Lord as he brings Israel through their time of trouble. But Israel's time of trouble is also the world's time of great trouble. So if people begin, it's kind of like the destroyer. I, I want your opinion on that. It's kind of like the destroyer. If people once figured out or could look up and see it, would they not lose, Would the governments not lose total control over the population? I mean, if you know you're going to be dead, we'll say in in uh, 30 days or 60 days, I think that probably changes your attitude a little bit. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, I think you're exactly right. Uh, I remember that old movie they brought out called Melancholia. They called it. And that was about an inbound uh, planet of some type, and uh, everything went out of control. And, of course, uh, actually in that movie, it, that thing swung around and then hit the Earth. But uh, I was going to run something by you if you got time. Uh, there's a new yes. uh, book out called The Trump Prophecies. Yes. And and what's interesting, and I wanted your – I know you've had the experience with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and, and a word – but anyway, the Trump yes. prophecies, uh, it's called the astonishing true story of a man who saw tomorrow and what he says is coming next. And it's uh, Mark Taylor was the uh, author. Very, very interesting. I mean, I'm reading in it now. Very interesting. But the part I want, the portion I wanted to bring out, and, and what's interesting too, Stuart, is Mark Taylor and, and those that are involved in this book, this book comes a to- from a total different direction you know, we have watched, we've studied the Cyrus, the Persian king, you know, and Donald Trump, and yep. we've uh, seen the bots, we've seen the Torah codes and all of that uh, pointing towards Donald Trump and Cyrus and all. But this book mm-hmm. comes from a total, it comes basically from a remnant church, and it, it's a total opposite direction, but it says the same thing. And and it, it, actually, uh, Mark Taylor was told, and he's a retired fireman, by the way, he was told that uh, he saw Donald Trump on, on TV uh, at giving a speech before the 2012 election, or I guess it was, um, yeah, the 2012 election. And actually he was told by the Spirit then that he was hearing the voice of a president. And he looked at the TV and it was Donald Trump being interviewed. 
and he thought that Donald Trump was going to run that year, uh, which would be the second term of Obama, and win. But what he didn't know was that Romney was in there. Donald Trump didn't even announce it, and uh, Obama won it again. And so anyway, later in the book, though, this is a word that he was given, and I'll your opinion on this. He mm-hmm. says, the Spirit of God says, now this is a direct word he was given from the Lord. He said, the Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. For as Benjamin Netanyahu is to Israel, so shall this man be to the United States of America. <laughs> well, I had a similar incident but it involved Benjamin Netanyahu, where I was watching TV, and he was giving a speech somewhere. And the Lord said, Netanyahu, this was a long time ago, this was probably 20, 25 years ago, Netanyahu will be the man who takes Israel through the tribulation period. Same thing, basically. And you know, Netanyahu was kind of gotten rid of. But he came back, and everybody said there was no chance he was ever going to be reelected. But like Donald Trump, he got elected, and he's still there after many attempts to dump him. And so uh, I don't know how long he will exist into the Daniel's 70th week, which I think begins very, very soon, but he's, he's still there. And it looks like he's deeply involved in this uh, peace and security and peace agreement, whatever it is. Uh, You know, it might be the uh, Oslo Accords, because when the Oslo Accords were announced, they were announced as a two-year, five-year agreement, kind of a stepping stone to peace. And it was announced on BBC, and Tom Brokaw, who I happened to be watching at the time, announced it as a seven-year agreement. So I've often wondered, with Obama becoming the um, Nobel Peace uh, Peace, uh, Prize, you know, that they gave him, the Peace Award, and he hadn't done anything, but it's Oslo, and then we have the Oslo Accords. So they could bring this thing up and bring it forward anytime, or it might be an Arab agreement. We really don't know exactly what it is that's coming. But, yeah. Uh, I had a similar experience. I just, it was uh, kind of like when I was taken to Washington and the Lord said, it's over. Doesn't matter what they do, he said. That's what the Holy Spirit said. Doesn't matter what they do. So it's a meanie, meanie, turco, whatever uh, kind of a statement. You have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And it was like written in titanium. There was not going to be a reprieve at all. It was coming. And it didn't matter what they did or who was in or who was out. I think once a, a, a country crosses the line with the Lord, that's it. He may not lower the boom for 30 years. Might even not lower it until 40 years. But once that decision has been made, and we know it has been, we would have healed Babylon, but she will not be healed. Well, that's basically what I was told. It didn't matter what they did, because they weren't going to do that which was necessary to actually heal the nation. And here we have Trump trying his best to turn things around, and I don't know if he's part of it or not part of it. It doesn't really matter. He's trying to turn things around, but do are the American people actually rising up to help him? So far, not a lot, I guess. What do you think? Yeah, I'm trying to be really open on where this goes because, you know, as I shared with you, I felt like that a Donald Trump presidency, the, 45, the 45th presidency coming out of nowhere, <coughs> not prophesied, mm-hmm. not even spoken of, nobody even thought he would run. And uh, suddenly it, it arrived, and it shocked the whole world, literally. And, and so I'm trying to be open. If this is a window of time that the, the remnant church or, you know, the church around the world uh, uh, and, and the pivot to the Middle East and the changes of all of this stuff, uh, you know, how long will this uh, window of time 
exist. We don't know. You know, as Augusto said a number of times, he gave the warning. He said, if if Donald Trump goes down, we're done. We're toast. He said, they'll come after us immediately. And so we've, we've the window's still open. I mean, literally, it's still open. He's still in office. Everything they've yep. tried to do to remove him from office hasn't yet accomplished that. And now I'm hearing, Stuart, I heard today that uh, the news media is camping outside Obama's house in Washington and also uh, seeking direction from Obama. And, uh, you know, here we are on, uh, what would you call this, part two of the the, the rebellion, the revolution, the civil war that's yes. ongoing. Matter of fact, in this book, uh, The Trump Prophecies, they were, they were told also uh, by the Spirit, that this game of American Thrones was not a joke. It's real. Oh, I think so, and they're playing for keeps. As I've said before, this is a communist coup, and I don't know why in the world they won't name it what it is. This is the deep state. Uh, this is It's very, uh, how do I say, insidious how they've done it. For years, the communists have been infiltrating. Uh, you know, Fabian socialists, Marxist, communists, whatever you want to call them, socialists. But it's a dictatorial socialism that they 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 want to bring in. But they have infiltrated the schools, uh, the medical profession, all of it. And here comes little spoiler, Donald Trump. <laughs> well, w- what's the reaction going to be? Once they figure out Donald Trump is dead serious, they're going to become dead serious, which I think they are. The de- I was reading an article where the, uh, 30 congressmen now have received death threats, pretty much. Yeah. So this is moving into not just rhetoric, but violence. Have you heard any more about the July American Spring? I don't doubt that it's coming. It might even come a little, well, we're at what? What is today? 23rd. So, but it's supposed to turn hot. So that's not going to help things. Yeah, I I haven't heard any more. There was a a number of warnings, and it seems the plan is to begin July, which they really, I think, uh, focusing on around July the 4th, Independence Day, to really kick off the revolution against Trump in the streets. Now, uh, whether this will start a little early in July, I don't know. But, uh, you know, we're looking towards a September the 23rd uh, star sign, and, and you did a blog uh, on that earlier. And uh, you yes. seem to completely validate that. I think Stan Dale completely validates that, and it appears valid. Uh, but we've got August and uh, or July and August to reach September, and uh, it seems that there may be trouble in the streets for the next few months. Well, I wouldn't doubt if war springs out. You remember that vision of your friend? War everywhere. Suddenly yeah. war. War everywhere. Which sounds like, you know, kind of a revolution here in, in, in America and wars and rumors of wars uh, really starting to ignite all over the world. So, yeah, the star sign, by the way, is absolutely legitimate. As to what it means, I'm still working on it. I'm going to post uh, little bits of the prophetic insight. I think it's very, very important. But there's absolutely no question that the Bible teaches emphatically that when the church age is over, when the last of the Gentiles comes in, it immediately goes over to Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. No, I'm not going to argue about the rapture there. How many positions are there on the rapture? I guess, let's see, pre-trib, at-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, no rapture, post-trib. So all I guess I can say about all of that is Jesus knows exactly when he's coming back to pick us up, and I don't think our theologies are going to matter a whole lot when it comes right down to it. But there's no question. Well, ironically... yeah, yeah, I was ahead. just going to mention. Yeah, I was just going to mention without really getting into any of the the rapture reports. But I was going to mention in, in uh, Zephaniah it talks about there is a season. Pray that you be hid or accounted worthy. You know, 
Yes. And so uh, there is a time of, of, of uh, uh, I guess you could say, a, a hiding, a hiding place uh, that uh, God's people should desire. Yes, and an awful lot of people are probably uh, not even paying attention to any of it. And I, it, it, I think this whole thing comes, as, like the Bible says, as a snare, and it's called sudden destruction, cometh, and it's global. So whatever this thing is, it's on the way. It is a global event, and it hits every nation all over the world. So... Uh, the only thing that I have ever been able to come up with would be the removal of the church. And even the New Age and the bots are talking about this ascension and this vanishing of people. Now, I don't know if yeah. they vanish or where they just fall over dead. You did a, a lot of research on that. Um, what did you call it? Uh, what was the name of that article? I, I, ca- I called it God's Prehistoric Rapture. That's right. And it was about a die-off. Yeah. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. And if you read carefully, uh, God removed his people before Noah was taken up in the flood. Because he didn't want uh, them to see what was going to happen to all their rallies. And it seems like every family has their mockers, just like Lot had his mockers. Because he went over to warn, and they wouldn't pay any attention to him. So, <laughs> fire and brimstone. So it appears to me that this star sign, totally legitimate, uh, may very well be the exact beginning of Daniel's 70th week. I'm going to get into all of that. But, it, yeah, it, it's real. It's valid. There is no question at all. That that sign, although the gainsayers say, well, that's happened a number of times. No, it has not. Uh, They've run software programs to the dates that they claim it. They're different. They're similar, but they're off. And usually it's Jupiter that's way, way off in the star sign. And, And the lack of the alignment of the stars. There's only one time that's happened. Uh, before, and that was about around the creation, I think, of Adam. And it's happening again. On uh, And you know what's interesting? 923 this year falls on Saturday. Huh. A high Sabbath. Well, that's what, the, that's what the Feast of Trumpets is. Wow. It's a high Sabbath. And what's also interesting is that Leviticus 23, 23, the Lord is giving the instructions in 24 about Feast of Trumpets. Huh. I don't think any of that is coincidental to you. No, absolutely not. No, it seems by design. Yeah, this whole thing is by design. And the designer is an incredible mathematician so far beyond humanity that we can't even comprehend it. So, anyway, uh, Darnett, are you still with us? Uh, I think she's checked out. She hung up? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank her for me. That was very interesting. And I think people need to know about all that. Uh, We are going to be dealing in the paranormal much more than people realize. And they're going to have to start being alert for it, especially as we approach the the star sign of 923 and the Feast of Trumpets. So it's going to be very, very interesting to watch as we close in. But I think we're heading into war. What's your final word here, Larry, before we close out? Oh, as as you were doing the show and talking to Darn Ed, and then now we're talking about the star sign, it seems like the, the the wise thing to do for God's people would be to continue to pray and watch. Yes. The Lord said, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So we're, the signs are coming. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. We appreciate your your listening, and we'll see you next week. Okay, good night.